Hello and welcome to the next video in the Mechatronics video series for getting things set up for the Mechatronics classes at Reykjavik University. Today we're going to talk about setting up Eclipse and in particular we're going to be setting up a pre-configured set of Eclipse to work with the Arduino and we're going to get it working with Subversion so you have an easy way to safely share your projects with other team members without having to leave Eclipse itself. So let's get started. First we have to go get the software. The distribution point for the Eclipse Arduino software is this place called eclipse.byins.at. If you search for Arduino and Eclipse, it's the first thing that comes out. And now we get to the first trick. There's a bug in the stable version of Eclipse Arduino, which is called Slyber, or Slow Bear, which causes a version to break horribly. So instead of installing the stable version, which is what you'd normally do, and sometime in the future you'll be able to do this, I don't know exactly when, but for now we're going to be installing the nightly build because the problem has been fixed. Go to nightly build, and in particular you want a build or a stable version that is newer than September 1st. That's when they fixed the bug. So we can see that this version is newer, and I've downloaded both to speed things up. If you look at the dates, the stable version, which is this top one, was uh, built on October, sorry, on August 3rd, and that's why it's too old. Whereas this version I just downloaded was built on September 6th, and therefore it's the version we want to use. So we unzip it, using 7-zip if you haven't already installed it. Extract here. Then we have a tar archive, which we have to extract again. Extract here. Next trick. Many of these older applications do not like to be run out of very long path names, and they especially don't like any path names that have spaces or funny characters in them. If you install them in OneDrive or Dropbox or other places where you might have Icelandic characters or Xanted characters or spaces or strange characters, it may not work. And so we're going to install it into a new directory that is in the base level of our hard drive to ensure that there are no funny characters. So I'm going to C. I'm going to right drag slow bear there and move it here. And now I'm ready to get started. I go inside. I generally run the launcher exe. I'm not actually sure what the difference between these two are, but I'm going to go run launcher exe, and it's going to download the rest of the Arduino infrastructure in order to run things. If this takes a few minutes to get started, don't worry. That's pretty normal. The default workspace is usually good enough for most people, but it's up to you. Now you can see that SlowBear is finishing by downloading the rest of the Arduino infrastructure. So we'll wait to continue until this is done. And important to note is, if at this step or any further step you get a strange warning about programs being in the path that may cause problems, you're in trouble. For that, you should go find uh, me or another instructor to help you dis discover where that program is installed, so you can then uninstall it to make sure that the right version is being used, because there are certain programs that are specially modified for this Eclipse Arduino that are different than the stock installs in some of the other programs you might use. The ones that we know are, are ones that tend to cause conflicts are the AVR Dude software, which you install for the individual Eclipse Arduino install sometimes, and the other program that has caused a problem on my computer in particular is if you install git software for the command line tools. Both of these install a program called sh.exe which has a different way of parsing path names. Just slightly different enough that it will cause problems for SlowBear. Now that it's finished installing we can get started and testing to make sure that that the Arduino elements work. We close the welcome screen to get it out of the way. Shrink it so it fits on the screen that we have here. And now, let's start a new sketch. We do it just like on the standard Arduino interface by clicking New Sketch. We'll call this Blink, 
because we're going to do a blink example next. We tell it which Arduino we have installed. Oh no. We leave that alone. We tell it which COM port it's on. COM1 or COM4 or COM3, whatever is appropriate. Next. Now, we can either use with a blank INO file. We can have a CCP fi CPP file, which changes some things a little bit. By default, if you're just doing Arduino development, INO is good enough. But we can also start with the sample sketches if you know that what you're doing is based upon an existing sample thing. So we scroll down, go to examples, basics, and blink. Our good default example that should always, always work. Next. We can leave these defaults alone. Finish. Now if we expand it, we can see that our code is right here. And there's some warnings, but we can ignore those for the moment. And now, one thing immediately that strikes us is the INO files automatically include the headers, but since we're in a smarter system that's trying to check all the definitions of file names, functional names, etc., we need to actually tell it where these are defined. And that is in the Arduino core file called Arduino.h. If you want to check it out, it's right here. You can see this is where a bunch of those important constants and function names are defined. So we need to tell it blink to include that. And once we've done that, those warnings all go away. We now test to make sure it compiles by clicking the verify button. If all goes well, you should see this work. And you should see build finished with no errors, in which case all is going well. Now let's say we wanted to share this project with the rest of our team members through Subversion. We have to install a Subversion plugin. I'll talk about that in the next section. Welcome back. Now we're going to set up Subversion so you can work with the code safely in the repository. We start it by going to Blink, our example we're working with, right clicking going to team and we want to share our project but we have no way to do this so instead we go to install new software click on the release that says your version which in this case is probably neon if you are using an older version of neon then you will have to use the this URL except replacing the last part with neon. I'll show you the example right now. Mars. And you'll want to add it so you can remember. Mars. You only want to do this if you're using an older version of neon that was made before September 1st. For the latest versions of neon, you can get by using the versions that say neon. We have this collaboration, but for faster, we can search for SVN. And now we want the Subversion SVN Team Provider. Say next. We say next, accept the terms of the license agreement, finish. And now you will get to, once it's finished installing the software, reboot Slowbear again. Restart Slowbear. to restart. And 
now slow bear is back up again. Now we would like to share, and hopefully now we get the option to use subversion. Team, share project. We say we'd like to use subversion. Now we have to pick which connector. Always pick the SVN kit. I have yet to get the Java HL kits to work. If you know better about how to install the subversion binaries correctly, then you can probably get this to work, but I have never gotten them to work correctly. So I always use the pure Java version. Say next. Now it's installing the software, as we can see in the other window. We say OK. And we get to restore its slow bear again. Now we're ready to actually share our project. Right click, team, share project, subversion, next. Now the question is what should the URL be? Conveniently, if we have the project already in another folder, we can ask where to put it. Let's say I want to put my Blink project inside the Foley folder here. What I do is I go into my folder, I right click, I say properties, I click on the subversion tab, and now this is the URL I want to put in there. It's already selected for me, so all I have to do is hit Control C to copy. Go back to my previous window, Control V to paste, and then I put my username and password. I want to save authentication unless I like typing my password a lot. If you notice, it already put the project name at the end of the name. If you want to change the name, you can use these advanced modes, but the default works pretty well. And now this is the commit message you will use to share my project into Subversion. If all goes well, I should see this. Now I will be writing a comment of what I did, sharing the Blink project for others to use in slow bear. Make sure your commit messages are something that tells you what's going on and why you're doing it. And ta-da, if we expand our code, it now has this funny little symbol next to it to tell you if you've changed anything. Let's say I changed something. So, turns into the on for one second. Maybe this is wrong. Maybe I want to make it be for a half second. I go down here and change the speeds to be 500, 500. I save it. I check it by verifying to make sure it still compiles and I haven't made something that doesn't work. And now, if I look at Blink.ino, there are these little right angle symbols. The right angle symbols indicate that something has changed. So now that I'm sure that my code is good, I will now go Team and Commit it. So I click on my project, right click, and you can pick individual files, of course, this way. Team, and now I want to commit. I can also use the hotkey Control-Alt-C. What did I do? Updated the blink to be faster because it's boring. I hit OK. And now I've checked in my code. Let's say that someone else has checked in code for you and now you want to be the one getting the project. I'm going to demonstrate this by first getting rid of the project that I have. Delete. I'm going to delete it from the contents on the disk otherwise it will cause conflicts. Well, it wants me to synchronize before I delete it first, just to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. So that's a reasonable thing to ask. So let's do what it says. Team, synchronize with the repository. It says no changes found. Nope. Now we will delete it just to get rid of it. And now we'll just continue anyway. Now let's say that someone else has a project, which we know is Blink, that people want to now check out, your partners probably, again, if you don't know where it is, go into the Tortoise SVN and find where it is. In this case, I have to update because I made changes. I right-click on Blink, and I say Properties to find out where it is. I get the URL. I copy it with Control-C. I go over here, and I say New and Other. This is the tricky part. New, Other. I say Subversion, Project from SVN. Next. And it already remembered from last time. 
So we can just use the existing one to start. We can browse to find where our Blink project is. This is the project we want. We say finish. It will grab a bunch of information. I can change the name in case there are two different projects with the same name. Or I can just use the defaults, which are usually good enough. And then it will use my default workspace. So now I'm good. And now my project is here. Again, it's in subversion. You can see it knows the version numbers. And if changes are made and I need to do an update, I click right click on the project team. And now you'll see all the sort of standard messages and commit uh, and subversion options that you would get in Tortoise SVN. So let's say that my partner made some changes and I wanted to get them. I could either use synchronize with repository or just update. And I will get any changes my partner made. So that's the super fast introduction to you setting up SlowBear, the Eclipse Arduino IDE, with subversion so you can get working on your projects. Thank you for watching.